Hello, everyone. If you've watched our previous black hole videos, you'll remember that density is the biggest contributor to the formation of black holes. If you apply enough pressure to an object and continue to compress it incredibly, with a little patience, you can watch the object turn into a black hole after a while. At some point below a critical threshold, the force of gravity will become so strong that it will overpower all other forces of nature, giving you a black hole. For example, if we were to take you and compress you down to the size of an atom, you would turn into a black hole the size of an atomic nucleus and the mass of a human. Roughly speaking, it is useful to keep in mind that the biggest factor in the formation of black holes is density. Billions of years ago, just before the Big Bang, our universe was much smaller than it is today so its density was much higher. Why didn't the universe turn into a black hole even though it was the perfect backdrop for a black hole to form? Today, we will shed light on this issue together with you. Let's get started. This question can be turned into several more specific questions with different answers. Sometimes, people have a hard time understanding why the Big Bang wasn't a black hole. After all, the density of matter in the first fraction of a second was much higher than that found in any star, and dense matter would be expected to strongly warp space-time. Matter of sufficient density must lie in a region smaller than the Schwarzschild radius relative to its mass. The Schwarzschild radius is a characteristic radius associated with each mass. If a given mass is compressed to this radius, no known force can prevent it from collapsing into a space-time singularity. The term Schwarzschild radius is used in physics and astronomy, especially in the theories of gravity and general relativity. If an object is smaller than the Schwarzschild radius, it is called a black hole. For a non-rotating object, the surface at the Schwarzschild radius serves as the event horizon. Neither light nor other particles can escape from the region within this surface, so these objects are named black holes. However, the Big Bang manages to avoid being trapped inside a black hole of its own making, and paradoxically, the space near the singularity is actually flat rather than tightly curved. How is this possible? The short answer is that the Big Bang expanded rapidly in the beginning and got away with it because the rate of expansion slowed. While the early universe was incredibly dense, it was also incredibly uniform. The average density throughout the universe was the same from place to place. There weren't enough differences to trigger the formation of black holes. What about the entire universe itself? Of course, all the matter in the universe may have stopped the Big Bang and collapsed everything back to the singularity. However, this does not necessarily mean the formation of a black hole. Black holes are points of infinite density in space. The singularity in the Big Bang was an infinite density of space itself. So what is the difference between the Big Bang model and a black hole? In some ways, you can think of the universe as an inverted black hole. A black hole is a singularity in which matter flows. The universe is a singularity through which matter flows. A black hole is surrounded by the event horizon, a surface we cannot see through. The universe, on the other hand, is surrounded by a cosmological horizon, a surface that we cannot see outside. The most important difference is that the event horizon is fixed while the cosmological horizon changes from observer to observer. Standard Big Bang models Friedman, Roberts, and Walker, let's call it FRW solutions for the gravitational field equations of general relativity. 
These can describe open or closed universes. In all these Friedman Robertson Walker solutions, there is a singularity at the beginning of the universe that represents the Big Bang. Black holes also have singularities. Moreover, no light can escape in the case of a closed universe, which is the general definition of a black hole. So what is the difference? The first clear difference is that the Friedman Robertson Walker models as Big Bang singularity takes place in the past of all events in the universe, whereas the singularity of a black hole takes place in the future. The Big Bang is therefore more like a white hole, a time-inverted version of a black hole. According to classical general relativity, white holes should not exist because they cannot be created for the same time, reversed reasons that black holes cannot be destroyed. However, if they have always existed, this may not be the case. But the standard Friedman Robertson Walker Big Bang models are also different from a white hole. A white hole has an event horizon that is the opposite of the black hole event horizon. Nothing can pass into this horizon, just as nothing can escape from the horizon of a black hole. Roughly speaking, this is the definition of a white hole, such as static Schwarzschild solutions or rotating Kier solutions of the Friedman Robertson Walker model. Note that it is easy to show that it differs from a standard black or white hole solution, but it is more difficult to show it different from a more general black or white hole solution. The Kier metric, or Kier geometry, describes the geometry of empty spacetime around an uncharged axis symmetric black hole rotating with a hemispherical event horizon. The main difference is that Friedman Robertson Walker models do not have the same kind of event horizon as a black or white or white hole. Outside a white hole event horizon are world lines that can be traced indefinitely into the past without ever encountering a white hole singularity. Whereas in a Friedman Robertson Walker cosmology, all world lines originate from singularities. Of course, the real universe might be different from the Friedman Robertson Walker universe. So can we rule out the possibility that it's a black or white hole? Don't worry, we're not going to get into whether there really is a singularity. And we're going to assume general relativity is correct here. The previous argument that the Big Bang was a black hole still holds. While the black hole singularity is always located on the future cone of light, astronomical observations clearly show that there was a hot Big Bang in the past. The possibility remains that the Big Bang was actually a white hole. A white hole model that fits cosmological observations should be the time inverse of a star collapsing to form a black hole. With a good approximation, we can ignore the pressure and act like a spherical dust cloud with no internal force other than gravity. Stellar collapse has been studied extensively since the seminal work of Snyder and Oppenheimer in 1939, and this simple phenomenon is well understood. By gluing together any Friedman Robertson Walker solution inside the globular star and a Schwarzschild solution outside, it is possible to construct a complete stellar collapse model in the absence of pressure. The space-time inside the star remains homogeneous and isotropic during collapse. There is one final twist in the answer to this question. It has been suggested by Stephen Hawking that the distinction between black holes and white holes may not be as clear as it first appears when quantum effects are taken into account this is because of Hawking radiation, a mechanism by which black holes can lose matter. We have come to the end of our mind-blowing video. Do you think the Big Bang was actually a white hole? Do you believe in the existence of white holes? Please don't forget to share your ideas with us. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell notification for more videos.
See you in another video.